Join us on the program right now, Kira Davis, vlogger at uh, kiradavis.net. Joining us, Kira, thank you for your time. Hey, Cam, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. I'm glad you could be with us today. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, uh, for folks who don't know, you do some incredible videos and video <laughs> commentary, and you've got one that I think is so appropriate right now because we had Senator Feinstein, we had Senator Schubert, Senator Durbin, uh, Representative McCarthy, and others uh, standing up there in a press conference today calling for gun bans, saying that if we only ban these guns, if we ban these magazines, if we uh, 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 put an end to private sales of firearms, if we start registering firearms and keep track of who all the legal gun owners in this country are, then we can prevent massacres like what we saw at Sandy Hook, like massacres like what we saw in Aurora. Uh, and you've got a video, you can't ban evil. Yeah. And, and And I think... Kira, you know, I think that is such an important thing to say. But what we're talking about here, in a lot of ways, look, all Americans, whether you are pro-gun, whether you're anti-gun, whether you're an NRA member or a Brady campaign supporter, unless you are one of those monsters who wants to kill innocents, we are on the same side that this is wrong and we want it to stop. The difference comes in, uh, how do we go about doing this? And, you know, we've got anti-gun folks who are staking this moral high ground uh, and say, well, you know, if, if you don't agree with us, then you are you're, you're, you're evil. You're part of the problem. You're wrong. You are a rotten person. You're a monster. You want to see these things take place. And there is a whole other ideology, a whole other policy prescription that says, you know what? It's you can do all the bans you want. But you're still not going to stop these things from happening because not not through a ban, because you can't ban evil. Right. You're exactly right. And um, I, I think it's important for listeners to note that I, I am black I'm at, or I, African-American. I guess I never use that term. I kind of hate it. But but um, I I have a specific point of view about the issue. And I used to be one of those people that I used to be a Diane Feinstein, you know, I used to be that person that thought if you just ban these weapons, that it's the guns that are the problem and no one should ever own a gun. I used to think that until I had to live alone in, in the middle of, of a very um, desperate area in inner city, the ghetto basically with two children. And I realized I have no way to protect us, and all of these people have guns. But the point I was making in my video was not that that um, not just that. Hey, we have the right to have guns, and that's why we should have guns. Although I think that's a pretty effective argument. Right. The point I was trying to make was to people who are, who think like I used to think, and I wanted to to remind them that look, there's a reason why we have the Second Amendment, and as a Black American. I wanted to really speak to people who, who feel like they're protecting people like me. They're protecting minorities. They're protecting moms. I'm a mother. And I wanted to say, look, the last group of people in this country who couldn't own guns were slaves. And, it, and blacks have an inherent distrust of the government, as we should. It was the government that brought us slavery. It was the government that brought us Jim Crow. You know, let's not depend on the government to keep us free. They haven't been very dependable in the past. And the other thing is that we can have bans on everything. You know, cocaine is illegal, but people still use cocaine all the time in this country. What? And cocaine is illegal. What are you talking about, everywhere. Kira? I don't mean to burst your bubble, but there people use drugs. We won the war on drugs so. in 1984. I, 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 Mr. T had Nancy Reagan sit on his lap, and we won the war on drugs. What are you talking about? I, I didn't know how. I don't. I guess I don't know my history. I'll have to go. Back <laughs> and look that up, but I'm pretty sure um, I'm an actress by trade, and I know a lot of cocaine users. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, I want to get back to what you said, because I, I tweeted something earlier today that tell me gun control works when it's, when it's tougher for the thug in Chicago to get a gun than it is for the single mother who wants one to defend herself. Exactly. And, you know, and, and I... I I'm, I fell in love with a woman who lived in a very bad neighborhood in Camden, New Jersey, and was a single mom of two. Um, and I've, I've told this story a couple of times before. I, I was 22. I didn't grow up in a gun-owning family. I didn't really think a lot about the issue. I was probably one of those soft supporters of gun control at the time. And I remember talking to her on the phone one night, and I heard gunshots in the background. And then I couldn't, I, she couldn't, she wasn't talking to me after that. 
And I spent an entire evening just frantic, wondering what was going on. And it wasn't until the next morning I was able to get a hold of her. And, and I, 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 was, I was so relieved. I was like, oh, my God, I get, what happened? And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, I heard gunshots. And she said, oh, I, I fell asleep. I was like, what do you mean you fell asleep? There were gunshots. And she said to me, I don't even hear them anymore. Yeah. And that's, you know, Camden, New Jersey, they had a lot of really restrictive gun control laws. And that was the moment when I thought to myself, what the hell are these laws here for? They're not protecting her. They're not protecting her kids. They're not doing it. The they're not doing any good that I can see for the people in this community. And that's the thing. We're not we're we're going to we're going to ban guns, but then we're also going to depend on somebody else to protect us. And I think this boils down to where we are as Americans, this idea that there's always going to be somebody else to do it, that it's not your responsibility. And I remember going into my first gun safety class before I bought my first gun and telling the lady I'm uncomfortable, I don't want to be here, I think gun owners are rednecks, and I think it's a dangerous thing. But my husband had to go away for four months to start this new job, and I'm all alone in the middle of Gary, Indiana, which is a mini Detroit, right. um, with my two children. And she said, Kira, it is irresponsible for you to not do everything you can to protect from your kids from evil. And the thing is, we can ban guns all we want. We will never ban people who want to do us harm. You can't do it. This guy that, that killed all those kids in Sandy Hook, he was breaking the law. He murdered people, and murder is against the law. We already have laws against murder, and yet people still murder. You can't ban evil. This is about control, and liberals always want to control things. They want to control us. They, that's why they don't like the idea of God. That's why they you know, try to take them out of their platform, because if you subscribe to the idea of a creator, of a God who, who is control of, in control of things, then you don't have control. That's why he's always being banned in the public square. That's why the idea that you should be in control of your retirement, of your protection, of your food, you know, of your vehicle. That's why they hate those ideas. They want control. They don't want us to be in control of our own faith. And this is just another incarnation of that. Talking with uh, Kira Davis from uh, Kira Davis. Now, I want to put up a picture, Kira. We've got a, uh, a shot uh, that you had posted on Twitter uh, took kids to shooting range for commercial shoot before school for a, a new local range. Ruby needs help with her form. Uh, by the way, uh, 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 parents in uh, blue states across the country are now outrageously outraged at you, Kira. They were they were toy guns, but I did go, go and purchase a uh, Marlin twenty two rifle that very day, bolt action. So we'll be learning how to use that this week. Very very nice, <laughs> very yeah. nice. Uh, you know. Kira, it is so important that, uh, that, that, that your voice and voices like yours are heard because, you know, we have this attempt right now to portray gun ownership as the realm of the uh, uh, pot-bellied uh, old men uh, in this country. And, that, you know, if, 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 you're, if you're, no offense to the pot-bellied old men who might be watching the program, uh, but, you know, there is no stereotypical gun owner in this country anymore. There really isn't, and that's one of the things that I found out when I became a gun owner, um, and I started talking to other people who own guns. As a matter of fact, here's a, here's something that a lot of other people, other minority groups, other groups of, of Americans outside of black Americans don't know about black America. We love guns. Black Americans are pro-Second Amendment. We just don't use the term pro-Second Amendment because the Constitution has some negative connotations in the black community. And that's a branding thing, and that needs to be changed. But most black Americans are in favor of, of owning a gun because most of us still live in high-crime areas. And we understand that you can't stop people who are willing to break the law from breaking the law. Yep. To get weapons. And here's you can one, only stop law abiding uh, citizens. And here's one other thing, Kira, that I want people, regardless of where they stand on the issue, to understand. Even in the worst neighborhoods, the good folks outnumber the bad. I don't care how bad the crime is in any given community. There are more good folks living there who are being terrorized by the bad folks than there are bad folks. Do you agree with that? I totally agree with that, and this was, this whole issue is about that. 
We're talking every time you raise your voice about this issue. There's somebody there who, to say, "Oh, you're you're terrible. You you don't care about kids. You don't, you know, you're you're just a, a, a hate monger." You know, it's but we're talking about when we're talking about Sandy Hook or Columbine or that or the movie theater in Aurora. We're talking about people, evil people who broke the law to get guns and then broke the law by killing people with those illegal guns. We're not we're not talking about any of the of the what is it? 140 million Americans that are gun owners. We're not talking 90 about or so, kids. 90 million or so, yeah. Okay, yeah. we're not talking about any of those that 90 million, that's a lot of people with guns who have never murdered anybody. You know, we're not talking about those people, people who are law abiding People who join the NRA are law-abiding citizens. You don't join the NRA if you plan on a mass murder. You don't do that because now you're being tracked. So these are law-abiding citizens we're talking about. When when you anti-gun people are talking to people like me about what hate mongers we are or how violent we are, you need to remember you're talking to a law-abiding citizen. I have a permit. I have a legal gun. I would never purchase such a weapon illegally, even if I want to. It's against the law. It's lawbreakers. It's criminals who have these weapons, and you can't undo guns. We'll never get rid of guns. Guns have been invented already. You can't uninvent a gun. The best you can do is empower every law-abiding citizen to protect themselves, A, against the government that might turn on them in the future one day, you never know, and B, against any intruders that want to come and harm them. I don't see how that is um, a scary thing. I think that's a positive thing. It's taking matters into your own hands. Well, and i got to tell you, too, Kira, I mean, we've seen a lot of media members, um, including uh, Bob Schieffer and, and Tom Brokaw over the past few days, uh, compare NRA members to uh, Bull Connor and the uh, segregationists in the South, uh, they have compared the idea of gun ownership and opposition to additional gun control laws as, as uh, a, a, you know, as the same thing as uh, fighting to maintain segregation and fighting to maintain these Jim Crow laws. It is such an offensive comparison, but it is it's such the a opposite. It, it, well, I was going to say it is also such a historically ignorant comparison because we know that you know a, a large component of the civil rights movement uh, w- was not just you know the the, the nonviolent movement but the deacons of defense we know that uh, Reverend Martin Luther King had applied for a concealed carry license had firearms in his home we know that Condoleezza Rice you know we all remember her talking about her father standing guard with his shotgun outside their home every night to protect his babies to deny that 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 guns in the hands of black Americans helped protect and helped uh, in, to help protect their rights and protect their lives and helped end segregation and end the Jim Crow era in this country is to deny American history. It, it is from the beginning of American history. I mean, we wouldn't be America if we didn't have access to weapons. And then, like I say in my video, you can't ban evil. You, you have slave. What happens when you give a slave a gun? They're not a slave anymore. That's why slaves couldn't own guns. Now they want to take guns away from us as black Americans. Here's the point I make in my video. And, and I like to say this to people who are, say what Tom Broca said. Tom Brokaw said, look, um, we, we have guns to protect our freedom. Look, we always talk about how, or we hear people talk about how, oh, if this Republican gets into office or that Republican gets into office, oh, George Bush, you know, we get this guy, he's going to take us back to Jim Crow. You know, these Republicans, we let them get in power, they're going to put you all back in chains. Well, if you don't want that to happen, then don't ever support a gun ban. A gun ban works for Republicans the same way it works for Democrats. It helps keep you free. We don't have a government that's ready to march on us right now. It's naive and foolish to think that we never would, to think that we're somehow better than everyone else in this world, that our government wouldn't turn to tyranny. We're not better than anybody. We're just regular people with a great constitution and a fantastic founding. But we're no better than anybody else that we can't turn into a tyranny as well. The Second Amendment is here to protect all of us, not just a certain segment of society. And it's a tragedy that we've lost 
so many of our young people to gun violence, but the answer isn't banning guns. That, that is just a recipe for further disaster, as is witnessed in every other area of this world that has banned guns. Absolutely. Kira, I, I could talk to you for the rest of the show and, and probably <laughs> then some. So will you come back? I would love to. All I would right. love to. Please Thanks, come guys. back soon. Kira Davis. Find her online at kiradavis.net. Thank you so much for your time, Kira, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks, Cam.